Here are the unfulfilled promises by President Obama. Number 9. Race Relations Barack Obama, born to a Kenyan father and from an American mother, became the first elected black president in the history of the USA. What seemed like a dream only 50 years ago came true when the first black president entered the White House and promised to change race relations forever. Voters enthusiastically hoped to see changes for the better. Who would have been better at erasing the lines dividing race in the USA rather than a black president himself? While he wasn't directly race-baiting during his campaign, he did get a lot of votes from the black community because of his promises. Mostly people were expecting to see progressive changes in the way race relations are handled. They wanted a society where the word race doesn't have any ambiguous meaning in the end. What speaks more of a progress rather than a black man acting as a leader of one of the most diverse countries in the world. However, polls and statistics show that actually things have taken a turn for the worse since Obama had been elected. After many publicized incidents that featured police killings and brutality in which black persons have been involved, the situation led to massive protests around the country and also the birth of the Black Lives Matter movement. It's been more than obvious that the gap between the blacks and the whites have been deepened by the events. In 2017, according to a poll conducted by CNN and ORC, overall 54% of Americans say relations between blacks and whites have gotten worse since Obama became president. In Obama's first 100 days after his inauguration, over 62% of Americans felt that race relations were generally good, and that was back in 2009. In the same New York Times poll conducted in July of 2016, that number fell to below 25%. Critics say that Obama tried to distance himself from being blamed for race baiting and instead chose to focus more on the rights of the LGBT community. Many are blaming him not for the lack of paying attention to any one race in particular, but for actually failing to bring America together as one, which he promised to do in his campaign for the presidency. Number 8. Health Premiums the improvement of the U.S. healthcare system was one of the major promises of President Obama back when he was campaigning. In fact, he made more than 50 different promises concerning healthcare. Seemed rather hopeful for a better health system, right? Even though he did introduce Obamacare, which allowed millions to gain access to healthcare, not everything went according to plan. Just in case you're living under a rock or you're below the age of 12, a health premium is the amount of money you pay to your health care insurance company in order to be covered. Not paying a health premium means you don't have insurance. Since millions of Americans live that way every day, Obama seemed determined to introduce change. If you're getting your insurance through your employer, you usually share that amount with your employer depending on the plan you have. However, the problem is if you don't get your insurance through your employer, premiums for families that don't get their insurance through an employer have been growing at an extremely high rate starting from 2006. One of the major promises that President Obama had been that he'd cut that cost for a typical family by $2,500 annually. He even hired an expert to do the math and get him this figure for his presidential campaign. Fast forward to 2017 and Data shows that healthcare premiums have actually been growing at a rather dramatic growth rate. Even the Obama administration itself acknowledged the situation in late 2016 when rates were expected to grow by 22% throughout 2017. This is happening due to the fact that insurance companies weren't aware of the types of customers they would be getting when healthcare became more available, meaning that everyone pays for more expensive treatments that only around 5-10% to of the users rely on. Number 7. Oil Consumption In 2010, President Obama has promised that by 2030, oil consumption to the U.S. would be reduced by at least 35%, which accounts to a reduction of more than 10 million barrels of oil per day. As you'd expect, the U.S. is a rather big oil consumer. In 2009, U.S. oil consumption was 18.7 million barrels of oil every day, and in 2016, it was up to 19.6 million barrels each day. This could be easily explained by the fact that even though there are regulations forcing companies to make more energy efficient vehicles, that doesn't mean those vehicles would be used less, as Americans do like to use their cars. On top of that, the use of petroleum is most likely to grow in the industrial sector, which kind of leads to the fact that oil would still be used but only for different purposes. 
The Energy Information Administration estimates that the U.S. would keep up oil consumption at a steady incline unless there is some super green type of energy source that would serve as the main source of fuel. Number six, cap and trade. A cap and trade system is a greenhouse gas emission trading scheme aimed to lessen the effects of global warming. The U.S. is second in the world for carbon dioxide emissions preceded only by China. The system works in a way where the government of a specific country, in this case the U.S., sets a limit, the cap of course, on how much carbon dioxide each company can emit into the atmosphere. Then each company gets some permits issued which can later be sold or bought as needed, which is the trade part. The idea is that the market will reward those companies that manage to lower their emissions more effectively and find those who don't. Seems ideal, right? As a matter of fact, Obama did get a lot of votes from the green activists who were hoping to see a healthier living environment. Unfortunately, it seems the odds of this happening in the USA are slim to none. The legislation managed to pass the House of Representatives in 2009, but wasn't even taken up for a vote in the Senate. Republicans attacked the idea of the cap and trade system, blaming that it would kill jobs just because it's another way to make manufacturers pay taxes. Who believes in global warming anyway? In 2010, when Republicans won the election, which ensured the majority in the House of Representatives, even Obama himself acknowledged defeat on this promise. However, he made another promise to find other means to fight against global warming, some of which he actually kept. Number 5. Guantanamo Bay the prison in Guantanamo Bay was established in 2002 by President George Bush. Its main purpose was to house detainees from the War on Terror and some prisoners who are thought as the masterminds responsible for the 9-11 attacks. However, the world got shocked when news started circulating around about the inhumane treatment of prisoners inside, the biggest of which is the fact that prisoners have been detained for an indefinite amount of time without even a trial. The treatment of prisoners involved brutal questioning methods such as waterboarding, sleep deprivation, and other acts of torture. When President Obama took office, known as a passionate human rights activist, he promised he would close the prison, and as a matter of fact, he signed an executive order on his second day in office saying that the prison should be closed within a year. However, he was met with some strong opposition from Congress. Instead, laws have been passed to prohibit prisoners from Guantanamo Bay being transferred to prisons in the U.S. Even though he managed to lower the number of inmates from 245 to 41 and send prisoners back to their home countries, as of 2017, the detention center still remains open. Number 4. Homeowner Help In 2009, Obama promised he would launch a $75 billion program aimed to help homeowners who are struggling with their mortgage and thus prevent almost 4 million people from losing their homes. Considering the number of U.S. citizens barely managing to cope with their mortgage, a program like this was more than welcome and seemed rather promising. To be honest, I have a better idea. How about buying a home you can afford? Anyway, even though President Obama went above and beyond to deliver and create the Home Affordability and Stability Program, the program barely managed to keep its promises. Around 1.6 million struggling homeowners saw their mortgage payments being lowered with the help of the program instead of the 4 million people it was supposed to help. Another devastating fact was that out of all the applicants, around 70% had been rejected, according to official government data. On top of that, a third of those who managed to enter the program eventually fell behind on their mortgage payments again anyways. Critics of the program have been describing this program as only useful to delaying foreclosure, and to be honest, those critics just might have been right. Number 3. DREAM Act The DREAM Act, or Development, Relief, and Education for Alien Minors, is an American legislative proposal for a multi-phase process for undocumented immigrants in the United States that would first grant conditional residency and upon meeting further qualifications, permanent residency. This program was aimed towards immigrants who arrived in the U.S. as children or are children of illegal immigrants in the U.S. The basic main goal was to allow them to pay a fine and go through a background check. As long as they'd learn English, they hadn't already done so, and had no criminal record, they would be allowed to regulate their stay in the USA and eventually become American citizens. Obama promised that as long as they hadn't done any crimes, they'd be safe to apply and wouldn't have to face deportation. 
However, things didn't go as smoothly as planned. The bill didn't go much further than the House of Representatives because leadership refused to bring it up for a vote. Even though Obama announced plans meant to, to delay the deportation of childhood arrivals and parents of American citizens, in 2014, the Supreme Court had the final word and stopped the plan from developing further. Critics say that Obama just didn't care enough for the immigration problems and was busy dealing with other things, while others claim Obamacare and the whole health system was more of a priority to him. The U.S. still remain as one of the leading countries in the world by the number of illegal residents in the country, a number that may be as high as 12 to 13 million. Number 2. Afghanistan after the 9-11 attacks, the war in Afghanistan started. Its main goal was to take apart the Al-Qaeda and remove the Taliban from power. The combat mission was finished in 2014, but troops were left behind as to help and train Afghan forces. At the highest peak, there were around 100,000 soldiers in Afghanistan. Obama promised that by the end of 2016, he'd have only embassy staff there. When he announced that he'd leave only 5,500 troops in Afghanistan, he received an open letter from Afghan ambassadors and commanders. In the letter, they were pledging him to leave at least 10,000 troops in the country and continue the American support in Afghanistan. Everyone feared conflict from rising again, the situation in Afghanistan is still extremely unstable, and the rise of the Islamic State in the eastern parts is of no help. Some have suggested that lowering the number of troops might have made things worse. In 2016, Obama himself admitted that the Taliban have been advancing and getting back territories in Afghanistan, including strategic points such as the town of Kunduz. Fast forward to 2017, and there are still around 8,000 troops or so in Afghanistan. It seems like President Obama was struggling to find the balance between finally ending the war and preventing conflict from happening again. Number 1. Minimum Wage Barack Obama failed to raise the minimum wage of $7.25 nationwide and ended up being the third president who didn't manage to do so since the minimum wage had been introduced in 1938. Every other president has moved the minimum wage towards the upper end and the last change has been made in July 2009 by George W. Bush. Obviously, it should go without saying, relying solely on an income of $7.25 per hour is extremely difficult and inflation rates definitely aren't helping. There are adults who are living on such a pay and are struggling with in borderline poverty trying to make ends meet. How that situation should have been avoided as someone reaches full adulthood and how minimum wage jobs should only be filled by those first entering the workforce is another argument for another video. Anyways, it's estimated that around 3.3 million people are being paid the minimum federal wage. Obama wanted to raise minimum wage to $10.10 per hour on a federal level, which meant that almost 5 million people would have been raised out of poverty, as determined by the federal government anyways. A lot of his supporters were hoping that the minimum wage would have been raised for many of those living in poverty who were hoping for a chance of at least a bit more of a comfortable life. The Obama administration blamed the Republican Party and the Congress for the obstructions along the way, saying they were willing to vote against the interest of their supporters just for the sake of opposing President Obama. What Obama managed to raise was the wage of federal employees by 1.3% in 2016, which I'm sure helped to raise the U.S. national to an unprecedented level of $19.7 trillion by the end of October 2016. When Obama came into office in January 2009, the United States had accumulated $10.6 trillion in debt. The national debt now stands at $19.7 trillion. That's an increase of $9.1 trillion. Not quite a doubling, but pretty close. Obviously, when President Obama almost doubled the actual number of the national debt during his administration, it goes without saying that no other president in history added more debt during their time in office. Here's what's next. The U.S. is a destination which is a dream come true for many. It's possibly the world's biggest hub for illegal immigrants. Statistics speculate that by the latest counts, a possible number of 15 million people reside illegally in the USA. 